This Use Update is brought to you by They ask us how we do it. How we outrun the world. They ask us how does it feel to fly? How do we dive head first into the deep? And emerge victorious. They ask us if we're afraid, if we're nervous, or if we ever feel lonely so far away from home. But the truth is, home is always right here with us. Get ready to witness the magic of the Olympic Games like never before. It's Friday, August 5th and time for the Bobby List today afternoon update. Thanks for joining us. I am Frenella Wedderburn. Members of the legal fraternity, the island's political directorate, relatives and friends packed the James Street Memphis Church this morning to bid farewell to Sir Frederick Smith former Attorney General and Justice of the Court of Appeal. Heading the list of dignitaries attending the funeral service were Governor General Sir Elliot Belgrave and Lady Belgrave, Prime Minister Frondo Stewart, Opposition Leader Mia Motley, Cabinet Members and President of the Caribbean Court of Justice Sir Dennis Byron. Tributes were paid to Sir Frederick, who was described as a churchman, family man, community man, a leader, politician, preacher and a public servant. His passing brings us closer to an end of a species of Caribbean men whose lives were centered around church, family, and community. An integrated life, not one lived in little compartments. It was Sir Fred's faith in God that framed his values and made him authentic, not false, humble, not arrogant, compassionate, not selfish, selfless, not self-centered, and which was reflected in concern for his fellow human beings, especially the poor, and in his understanding of the importance of service. Something happened in Sir Fred's life in his 40s and made him respond to the call of God upon his life to proclaim the word. Thus, for over 40 years, he preached the word faithfully from the pulpits of our Methodist churches. That was Reverend Dr. Cuthbert Edwards. Sir Frederick died last month at the age of 92. This morning's funeral service was followed by a private interment. A late night fire leaves a six St. John residence homeless. According to police, the blaze, which occurred just after midnight, destroyed the home of Tamisha Griffith, who lives in Venture No. 2 St. John. It also damaged a house next door. Both houses were uninsured. Two tenders, accompanied by a divisional officer and seven fire officials, extinguished the blaze. Investigations continue. In other news, tourism officials are sticking to predictions of double-digit growth for the sector this year. And CEO of the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc., William Griffith, says a number of initiatives, as well as a number of events, are already on the card to increase visitor arrivals. He made the comments yesterday as he delivered the tourism figures for the first half of the year. We maintain our positive projection for at least a 5% growth over the record double-digit growth of the past year. Challenges continue to arise every year, everywhere, I'm sorry, but we believe a well-diversified plan mitigates against specific weaknesses in any one market. We look forward to hosting a major meeting, incentive conference, and events, a MICE, as we call it, conference at the end of this month. We will be hosting the top 65 meeting and conference planners primarily from the USA. 
Barbados will also play host to the CTO State of the Industry Conference on September 13, and we're hoping to attract up to 350 tourism and industry professionals to that conference. Our rebranded Food and Rum Festival 2016 will also be launched in the next few weeks, and the event will take place this year, November 17 to 20. Prime Minister Frondo Stewart gives the Crop Over Festival the thumbs up, saying the annual event is one Barbadians should be proud of. He made the comments during his yearly Crop Over reception last night at his official residence. Over the last 50 years, thanks to the loyalty, the commitment, the hard work, and the high standards of Barbadians wherever they could be found, we have built a nation of which we can all be proud, a nation which is the envy of many other nations, great and small, across the world. Meantime, crop over stakeholders are again appealing for an ease in the value-added tax. Veteran band leader Trevor Chase tells Barbados today the exemptions are needed, especially for those who bring value to the festival. There's no way any of the bands that were produced on crop, crop over there bought their materials from Barbados. Mm -hmm. I go on camera saying that. Mm -hmm. They had to bring them in. You mm -hmm. understand? And once you have to bring them in, then obviously you're going to have to pay duties. Mm -hmm. Right? We went and we got the cultural bills sorted out. We applied. We did what they asked. And when we asked when, will, when it would be put into law, when would we be able to access this privilege that you are given to us? They don't know. Somebody got to be accountable. In sports, a bit of good news for world football governing body FIFA as president Gianni Infanito is cleared of any wrongdoings following an investigation into his expenses and recruitment. Infanito took over the affairs of FIFA back in February after the disgraced Sepp Blatter resigned. FIFA's ethics committee found no conflicts of interest and no breaches of the organization's ethics code. There's regional and international news after this short break. Get your paper, get your paper. Only 225, 220. Who? For what? That is the best still news. I don't read about that from Barbados today since last night. That can only the car do. 220, who? Barbados today. News you can trust. To news from the region, the Bahamas takes steps to implement legislation to strengthen no regional security. Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell led off debate in Parliament this week on the Advanced Passenger Information Bill. Minister Mitchell says the move is necessary in order for Caribbean countries to tackle increased gun violence, trafficking in persons and drugs. More in this report from ZNS News. Mitchell says during the recent CARICOM meeting in Georgetown, Guyana, regional leaders emphasized the importance of aligning national security to tackle crime head on. Many countries, including the United States, have introduced national legislation since 2006. Within the Caribbean community, APIS came into effect on the 1st of February 2007. Regional and international aircraft and vessels are required to submit advanced passenger information prior to arrival in and departure from any of the 10 member states uh, forming the single domestic space uh, of uh, CARICOM. So this means that Airlines flying to these countries must provide various details about each customer. In some cases, aircraft will not be able to land if they have passengers on board whose details have not been provided in advance. The importance of APIS is seen with the Bahamas Immigration Integrated Management System uh, comprised of the following systems. On the international front, South Africa's governing African National Congress suffers its worst electoral setback since 1994. With 94% of the votes counted after Wednesday's municipal elections, the party has lost the key battleground of Nelson Mandela Bay to the opposition Democratic Alliance. But the ANC is still in the lead nationally with 54% of the vote. 
and that's news and sports. But for the very latest, visit our website www.publicstoday.bb. Also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates and like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals or Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 99 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Good afternoon.